Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Natalie and this is the Stitch Magic Knitting Podcast. If you're new here, I'm a 24 year old crafter based in San Francisco, California, and on this channel I mostly talk about knitting. You can also find me on Instagram and Ravelry at NatalieRxmCreates. And today we're not going to have a normal podcast episode. Instead, I want to talk about a couple of the projects that I made in 2022 that I plan on frogging. To start off, I'll talk about what I'm wearing. I'm wearing my Sunday sweater mohair edition by Petite Knit. I knit a size extra small. And this is knit in Frida Fuchs Stuff to Lace in the shade Hubbards. It's a Surya Alpaca lace weight-ish yarn, and I held two strands for the yoke and one strand everywhere else. Although I've known how to knit for a very long time, I technically learned in first grade, I didn't apply any of those skills to garment knitting until this past year, and I would say 2022 is the first year that I actually took knitting seriously. I knit my first sweater and finished it in January, and that kind of kicked off a chain of events that led to me becoming the knitter I am today and falling in love with the craft. So I was filming my Everything I Knit in 2022 video, and it was really fun to look back at all the pieces I had made throughout the year and see how my skills had grown, but as a result of it being my first year of knitting, there are a lot of learnings and a lot of mistakes in the mix. And I realized that there's a decent number of pieces, especially from earlier in my knitting journey, where I just don't love how the garment turned out for a number of reasons. I think that the best course of action for those garments is to frog them and be able to reuse the yarn for a different purpose. Because right now they're just sitting in my wardrobe and they're not getting anywhere at all, so they're just taking up space. And some of these are really nice yarns that I'd like to get some wear out of, so I'm going to talk through I think 11 pieces that I plan on frogging, talk through my reasoning for why I want to frog them, and then also propose some ideas for what I want to do with the yarn. And of course that's all subject to change based on when I get to the project and when I actually want to cast it on, but I just wanted to give myself a few general ideas for what to do with these projects that are getting frogged. I'm also going to throw in a few projects that I liked the outcome of, but there's a few things that I need fixed on them. So I will be frogging parts of these projects, but with the intention of fixing it for a better fit or to include design details that I like more. And I wouldn't consider them necessarily pieces that I don't like, they just need a little touch up. The first garment on my list is a bittersweet one, but it is the first sweater that I ever knit. This is the Hazy Sky Sweater by A Honey Knits, and it's knit in one strand of Seismic Yarn and Dye Works Butter Erin in the shade Cream Rose Pearl, which is this really pretty, like, grayish purpley pink colored yarn. It's a hand-dyed yarn. And this sweater actually kind of has a long story, so I technically finished it in January of 2022, but I had the yarn a long time before that. I technically bought this yarn in fall of 2020. I remember the day exactly, actually, because it had been the day that Biden officially won the 2020 election, so spirits were very high in San Francisco. Me and my friends were just walking through the city, there were parades going on in the mission, like through the Castro, and then we walked up to Haight. And I passed by a little store, which I've come to frequent, called Firebird Yarns. And first of all, I went in because I really needed to pee because all of the bathrooms were closed because everyone was out. but. They didn't have a bathroom available, but what they did have was a ton of hand-dyed yarn, and I've since come to really like Firebird and visit fairly often, but at the time, it had been years and years since I had picked up knitting, and I was talking to the person that was working that day, and she kind of just convinced me to pick it up again. Of course, I didn't realize that it being a hand-dyed yarn store that the yarns were going to be so expensive, which... I think obviously like hand dyed yarn is like what $30 USD per skein around that. So I bought four skeins of this yarn and one pair of circular needles and she sent me on my way with a pattern recommendation. And so that pattern recommendation was from a pattern designer who's local to the Bay Area, um, Life is Cozy, her sycamore cardigan. And I didn't know the first thing about gauge or about knitting really at all and so I just cast it on with the needle she gave me and I would probably did not gauge, get gauge at all because I finished the body and one sleeve of the cardigan before realizing that it was going to be ginormous and I didn't have enough yarn for it. And so I ended up having to leave that in limbo for over a year and then eventually frogging it. And so I had 
just these four balls of yarn and this one pair of needles and I was like okay I kind of want to declutter and get this out of my life so I'm just gonna knit one sweater and then call it a day and then not knit anymore but of course that's not exactly how it worked out I ended up wanting to knit a lot more after making my first sweater and finding the community online but at the time I didn't really have any ideas on how to find patterns I Technically, I've had my Ravelry since 2014, but I kind of forgot that I had it. What I found was an internet listicle that was for like best beginner patterns for knitting, and I found this sweater. So yes, again, it's the A Honey Knits Hazy Sky sweater, and the way it's knit, it's knit flat. So there's, you knit the two body panels and you knit each sleeve flat as a square, and then you seam it all together and then add like the neckline ribbing. I finally learned what gauge was, although I didn't really know how to apply it, so I knit a gauge swatch with the number of stitches specified in the pattern, but it didn't meet gauge. So instead of sizing up or down needles or sizing up or down a pattern size, I followed this complex formula, not that complex, but I did a formula to get the number of stitches I should actually do, and it was fairly easy because, again, this garment is pretty much just four squares or four rectangles knit and then seam together, so the math was pretty easy to do. So the actual size isn't too bad, but and the knitting isn't too bad either. Like my tension's fairly even. I was knitting English style back then, so um, it took me quite a while also it being my first project. But a few things that I didn't really like, even though I knew my gauge was off, I like didn't know how to really account for it in the pattern. So the body is knit the bot like bottom up. And so the ribbing, stockinette, and waffle stitch portions are all knit to the numbers that they are in the pattern. And then the seed stitch, because I didn't have enough length on the body, ended up being super, super, a super big portion of the body. And I don't love how that looks. It doesn't look very balanced at all because it, the pattern does not specify to have that much seed stitch. So that's one thing I already didn't like about it. And then I also did a really bad job of seaming the garment. Obviously the pattern says like use mattress stitch, but I was like, I don't know what that is and I'm not gonna find out. So I just sewed it like up and down like this with some extra yarn and you can tell. Like my sleeves, I mean honestly it looks okay but it doesn't look good, you know what I mean? Like the sleeves, like the seam there is very chunky. Under the arm it doesn't look that bad but you can kind of tell and on the side of the body, like here with the waffle stitch you can tell it's like not seamless. Like. And if you were wondering what my seams look like on the inside, it just looks like, you know, like a clothing seam where um, there's all this excess in the seam allowance. But as a result, I never even blocked it or wore it out because I think I recognized once I started seeing more finished objects on Instagram that it wasn't a garment that was up to par with the quality of something that I would want to wear. And so it's kind of just been languishing for the last year, but I'm really excited to give it new life, especially because the yarn is kind of special to me and also was kind of expensive as a hand dyed yarn. This being an Erin weight yarn, the sweater I was thinking of making was the Yun sweater by November Knits and I do not think I have enough yarn to make the sweater as it's intended and so I think it's going to end up being more of a regular looking crop sweater because the Yun sweater has this really cool design feature where the stockinette portion of the body is super cropped and then it goes into a super long split hem with ribbing and I think it's a really cool look but realistically with my four skeins of yarn I'm not going to have enough to do the really long ribbing section so I think mine is just gonna look kind of like a regular sweater but I really liked the detail with the raglan where it's like a little more emphasized and one other pattern I had been looking at was sweater number nine by My Favorite Things Knitwear but first of all there's no short rows and I know it's pretty easy like I could add in short rows but why not just choose a pattern that already has short rows incorporated? Also, I wasn't crazy about the funnel neck. I was probably gonna have to shorten it. I think I'm going to go with the Yun sweater just because it has more of the things I like about the sweater already built into the pattern. I'm just going to have to forfeit that one design feature that kind of makes it more unique, but I think that's okay. Another piece I have that's gorgeous and that I love in theory, but practically doesn't really fit into my wardrobe or see anywhere is this. This is the Ghost Whisperer Top by Park and Knit, and I knit mine in one strand of Rowan Kid Silk Haze in the shade Pearl. The modifications I made are I shortened the puff sleeve, and I also only did the eye cord with one strand of mohair for the armholes, whereas it's used with two strands on the neckband. And I saw this pattern, and I saw a few of the renditions on Ravelry, and I immediately fell in love with it. I think it's super cute, and in my brain, I was like, oh, there's tons of things I could wear this with. I could like. My plan was to knit like another like 
thin tank top or like cute bralette to wear it with or like layer it over dresses but in the time since I've made this piece I just have found that I haven't worn it at all and part of it is because I never got around to making those undergarments or like those under pieces that I was going to wear with this but I also just think it's not something that's really my style or that I'm going to reach for. Once I frog this I will have two balls of the Rowan Kid Silk Haze which is not a ton but the project that I was thinking of making is the bindle bag by Ozetta. In my like scrap yarn I also have 70 grams of Mancha Lopez by Will Dreamers and that is exactly enough for me to get two of the small size bindle bags out. So I think I'm going to hold those together and make the bindle bag, which I think is a really cute way to use up scraps. I don't necessarily know how this like pinkish gray mohair is gonna look with the Manchalopis, which is like a brownish gray, but I think I'm gonna swatch and give it a try. And if not, I mean, I can always use the mohair for something else or wait to hold it with something else. But as it stands right now, it's not seeing anywhere in my wardrobe. I also actually never blocked this. Like, I think I was really scared of blocking mohair on its own at the time, but I never blocked it and then I never wore it. So this one is gonna be frogged. I think, I know frogging mohair is a really big pain. I know people say to stick it in the freezer, but I'm just wondering because this is knit on like 6.5 millimeter needles and it's only one strand. I'm wondering if it's going to be kind of okay to frog, but time will tell and we will see when we get to it. I'm going to talk about the next three pieces all together because they're all knit with the same fiber, which doesn't really fit in my wardrobe anymore. And I have the same reasoning therefore for frogging each of them and what I wanna do with the resulting yarn. So those are the Jelly Bean Sweater by Vicky Knits. The Happy Higgy Vest by Beatific Brenda. And the In the Mood Cardigan by Kara's Knitting. So obviously these are all knit with extra bulky yarn. They're all knit with Wool in the Gang Crazy Sexy Wool in various colors. And I, these are pieces that I knit very early in my knitting career. Basically after I finished that first sweater that I already showed, I found Knitstagram, I fell down a rabbit hole, and I was seeing these extra chunky sweaters, which I think a lot of people start by seeing these extra chunky sweaters and like how fast they knit up, and often the designs are really dynamic and cool and have color blocking, which I do like as a design element. But I ordered enough yarn from Wool in the Gang to make the jelly bean sweater, so that was the second sweater I ever knit. And before I had even finished that project, I had, I think they ran a sale, so I had ordered the yarn for the In The Mood cardigan. But while I was knitting the Jelly Bean sweater, I realized that I didn't love knitting with extra bulky wool. Like, well, it was fun to knit with because it went so fast, but I found that I wasn't wearing it, but I already had the yarn on the way for the In The Mood cardigan. The Jelly Bean sweater, it was my first Intarsia project also, which I think was pretty ambitious for someone who just learned how to knit their first sweater and so there were a lot of mistakes made. I read the chart backwards and had to redo an entire body panel for it to match up at the side seams. I think I've only worn it once or twice. I really like the vibe that the designer was going for with all of this intarsia color blocking. I really like the colors I chose. I think it's really cute in theory but I mean practicality wise in San Francisco it rarely dips below like 40 degrees Fahrenheit so there's really no need for me to wear a sweater like this especially when I can't even fit it under any of my coats and just size wise look at the size of this sleeve it's bigger than my face how is it supposed to look normal on my arm I did a lot better of a job with the seaming on this one like you can see it matches up perfectly on the side with mattress stitch I actually learned how to do that and therefore I don't think I messed up the pickup or the seaming for the arm to the body of the sweater since again this is another one where it's four pieces knit flat and then seam together but because a yarn that's this bulky just doesn't have drape it looks really thick and bulky coming out of the armhole and I just hated how that looked and like I said I really didn't have the appropriate weather to wear this in so it wasn't seeing a lot of wear and looking at these sweaters they're ginormous like they take up so much room in my closet and I think they'd be better suited for a different purpose. The Happy Hickey Vest is actually one that I knit from the leftovers of my In The Mood cardigan and the Jelly Bean sweater because I had the yarn sitting around, but 
I only wore this once or twice either, although this one actually got blocked. I did not block either of the other two because they're ginormous, and I don't even know how much blocking would help an extra bulky knit. Like this one I think grew a little bit, but it wasn't anything crazy. So I think it's time to say goodbye to each of these. And as you might've been able to tell, I don't plan on knitting another garment with these, but I do have a few ideas for what to do with the yarn. The first idea I have, which is something I already started doing with the tiny little ends of the yarn that I had for some reason kept, like I kept pieces that were one inch long. I don't know what I thought I was going to do with them, but I started taking those pieces that were completely unusable as yarn and I've been turning them into dryer balls. So I originally got the idea from Night Sky Knitting. She used some other yarns and felted them by wrapping them into a ball, putting them in a pair of nylon tights and running them through wash and dry cycles. That obviously is a technique that a lot of people use online, but for me, living in a building where it's in building washer dryer, I have to pay in quarters for all of my laundry, so it's not exactly an easy option for me to just run it through the washer and dryer a few times. And I know I could do it slowly over the course of when I do my actual laundry, but I think to give myself a little bit of a head start, I actually started by needle felting the very base of the ball because I also think the scraps that I had were too small to do for that method anyways. And so to give myself a foundation for what I can do with some of the other leftover yarns that I have, I just needle felted them together and it made a very small ball. And I think that I can start with that and then just start wrapping excess yarn around it once I have some longer pieces and then do the dryer ball method. But I'm really excited because I do use those balls, I mean, every time that I go to wash my clothes. So it would be exciting to have a few more because I've actually lost a few of my balls. And for them to come from a material that I already have in stash is great. That being said, I think since the yarn was a little pricier, I don't necessarily want to just turn all of this into dryer balls. So my other ideas were to make housewares. My first idea was to knit a blanket, and I know that blankets with really thick roving style yarn also don't tend to hold up that well with wear, like they pill a ton. So I was kind of moving away from that idea. I was like, the other idea is like pillowcases, kind of the same problem, but maybe a bit of a smaller scale of the issue. And then I saw on Urban Outfitters Home that they had these felted plant pots, and I think that could be a really cute option. They, like it seems pretty easy. Like I feel like I could just knit a long rectangle, felt it in the dryer, also like knit or crochet maybe would be easier, like a circle for the bottom of the planter, felt it, and then seam them together, and then needle felt a design onto the top of it. So I think that could be really cute. Another option is like coasters, but I wanna play around with felting because I think this is a yarn that will felt really easily. And if it's already not going to hold up to like normal home wear through general use, like if it's gonna pill a ton, why not lean into that and just make it a felted item that can't be, um, that can't be messed up like that. So that's just a few of the ideas I had for this yarn, but if you have any other ideas for it because I'm a little bit at a loss, then feel free to leave them in the comments. The next two pieces I wanna talk about are both test knits from last summer. And the problem with these pieces isn't that I dislike the pattern, but is that I dislike the fiber that I knit the pattern in. And so the first of these is the Summer Fridays tank by Kevin of Pearl Jam with some unintentional color blocking at the bottom because I ran out of yarn. The red is Earth Yarns Monochrome Cotton in a shade that's just a number because they don't actually name the colors anything memorable, and it's held with two strands. And because it was two cropped, I knit the bottom in Lion Brand 24-7 Cotton in the shade Ecru, which I already had in stash from making washcloths. This is a pretty basic summer tank, and you'd expect me to get a lot of wear out of it, except I hate the color. I don't know what came over me when I was choosing it at the yarn store, but I think on that particular day I was like, let me get outside of my comfort zone. I usually like neutrals and like purples, blues, greens. Let me do something that I haven't knit before that I ha don't own anything like. Maybe there's a reason why I don't own anything like it and it's because I don't bias towards wearing those kind of garments. As a result, this has barely seen any wear outside of my house. Like I'll still wear it inside my house to be comfy in the summer, but I really haven't worn it out because I don't like how it looks on me. As a result of it being a color I don't wear, obviously the resulting garment from frogging it is going to have to be something that's not a wearable either. And if I'm going to be honest, I don't have a project idea for this. I have a project idea for pretty much everything else in this video, but this one I don't because I don't like the color. 
I was thinking of maybe making a market bag with it, you know, those kind of trendy holy crochet project or market bags, but I don't know how much I would actually use that. Worst case scenario, it turns into a very expensive washcloth, but if there's any other use I could see for the yarn, then I would rather do that. I also wouldn't even mind kicking it up and sending it to someone, but I don't know who, how much of a market there is for pre-used, pre-caked yarn that also one of the skeins has a swatch cut out of it, a swatch amount cut out of it. So I don't really know what to do with this yarn, so if you have any ideas for it, please let me know, but this is the one project in this video where I don't really know what I'm going to be doing with it afterwards. The other project that was a test knit with the yarn being one that doesn't really fit the project is this. This is my Another Lace tie-up, and it's actually called that because the designer, Chris, of Another Knit, she gives three options for how the front is closed. I chose the buttonhole, or the button loop option because I'd never worked a technique like that and I wanted it to be a little more closed up because the version she has that just closes with ties is like a little more open and a little more exposed which is something that I thought was cute but probably wasn't going to get a lot of wear from me. I chose this yarn because it had already been in my stash but it was a horrible choice. The pattern says you can either knit with two strands of fin fingering held together or one strand of worsted and I was like oh I have a worsted yarn in my stash. This is Manos del Uruguay Maxima in the shade Stratus and it is like you can see it's one of those single ply very warm fibers that's very reminiscent of the extra bulky yarns that I already showed previously. As a result it makes for a, a very bad summer top because it's so hot and also I did do my gauge swatch but when it blocked it blocked a lot bigger and I assumed that having knit it in a cotton or a merino yarn would give it more drape but instead mine looks very boxy on the body and it like hangs down where it doesn't fit to my body so it looks like the fit is kind of off and I really enjoyed knitting this, I enjoyed, this is my first lace pattern and again my first time doing these really cool button loops. I found these buttons on Etsy that I thought were perfect and beautiful for this project and so in theory I would have really liked this if only I had knit it in maybe a cotton merino or a cotton. As a result I'm going to frog it even though I really do like this piece in concept. It was also my first time working a pico edge, that was very cool. and. I'm not going to knit, obviously, another summer garment with it. In fact, I'm going to pivot 180 degrees and knit some winter accessories with this yarn. This yarn, while being a blue, which is in my color palette, is still very bright for me, and I only have two skeins of the yarn, which doesn't feel like enough to knit a sweater or something where the fiber is more appropriate. I could probably knit a short sleeve or another tank top, which is not what I'm going for here. So I want to knit a little winter accessories set and I don't know if I'm actually going to have time to knit this before winter is out of San Francisco but it would be nice to have on hand since there are random cold days here but my idea was either to knit one really long maybe not really long because it's still not that much yarn but one longer brioche scarf or to knit a set with the September hat by Petite Knit and a pair of fingerless mitts I want to knit the Agnique cardigan later in this year and I think practicing brioche with a smaller project such as the September hat or a brioche scarf would be a really good way to get some rows in and get more comfortable with the technique. So this is something I anticipate doing before I knit the Agnette cardigan. I think the color is bright enough that it would be a nice pop in the winter if it's a little more dreary of a day. and In smaller doses like accessories I do actually see myself wearing this color. So. I think that is a very good option, also given the fiber type, it'll be really warm and cozy. That's my plan for these. I'm going to obviously keep the buttons, but I don't know, or I don't have any yarns that really match them in my stash right now, so I don't know when I'll be using them again, but I do really like the buttons. The last four pieces I want to talk about that are being fully frogged are all being frogged for the same reason, which is that they simply don't fit. Three of these garments are way too small on me, and one of them is too big. In the case of two of these garments, I actually plan on re-knitting that pattern or a very similar take on that pattern with the same yarn because I do like my fiber choice and my pattern choice, it's just that they don't fit the way that I want. In the last year, I've learned a lot about how I want garments to fit on my body and right now these are just not cutting it. I'll start with ones that I plan on re-knitting. 
The first is this. This is my Aosta cardigan and it's knit in petite wool from We Are Knitters in the shade Colorado. I really like this and even though it's way oversized on me, I still do get a lot of wear out of it. I think I would just like it a lot better if it was smaller on me and since I already get wear out of it, I know that it would be valuable for me to knit it at a smaller gauge. The problem with this is that even though I knew about gauge, I just assumed I'd be on gauge. I don't know why I assumed that seeing as the pattern calls for it to be knit on 7mm needles and I didn't have 7s because I don't think they're commonly included in interchangeable sets here in the US at least, but I had 6.5mm and I had 8mm and I don't know why I thought 8mm would be a better choice than 65 but I used the 8mm needles with the petite wool and I knit a size extra small and it fit okay pre-blocking but after blocking it really grew a ton. Now it has a very slouchy oversized feel which can be cute but especially in the arms I think it's just a little bit too oversized and I might also knit it actually a bit longer. It's quite cropped on me right now. If I have another chance to frog and re-knit it, I can make these modifications for my body. I know she also released an update to her Iosta pullover with short row shaping in the back of the neck that would help. I don't think she's released an update for the Aosta cardigan, but maybe I can also figure out a way to add short rows in so the fit is a little better because I do feel it riding up a little in the back even though it is a cardigan and the fit is a little more forgiving in those cases. That is one that I... That's one piece that I do love having in my wardrobe, I just know that it could be better. I probably won't frog it until I'm actually ready to knit it because I'm still going to wear it in my wardrobe until then but I'm really excited to see what it will look like with an improved fit. The next garment I want to talk about is another one where I plan on re-knitting it, or at least some version of it. I liked the idea. This is my Stockholm Slipover V-neck by Petite Knit, and it's knit in one strand of Hedgehog Fibers Tweety DK. This is cute in concept. I love the yarn. It's really out there for me with all of the neon pops from the tweed. She uses recycled bits of yarn from her dyeing or that people send into her to create the tweed bits, so they're all pretty unique and it gives a really fun speckled effect. First off, let me start by saying it's way too small on me. It's basically body hugging, which is not the size that I want a vest to be, and I'll tell you the sequence of events that led up to it being this small. Basically, I wanted a knitting project to take with me on my trip to Europe last summer. I was going to be in Iceland for a week and then Paris and Berlin each for half a week, and since the Iceland leg of the trip was going to be a road trip and I had an extra long flight over, I figured I would bring a knitting project. However, I had heard horror stories about needles being confiscated at airports, and I figured in case of emergency I wanted to bring a cheaper pair of needles, or not even cheaper, but a pair of needles I didn't care about as much. Unfortunately, I had been knitting with my Chowgu interchangeables for quite a while. I bought them very early in my knitting journey, and I didn't have that many wooden needles. I think the sizes I had for wooden needles were 15 millimeter and 10 millimeter, which I had used for my bulky yarns, which I was obviously not bringing on the trip. I had a 6.5 millimeter, but no yarns that went with it, and I had a 3.5 millimeter. So I ended up choosing the 3.5 millimeter, and I was swatching different projects that I was wanting to make. None of the swatches were turning out correctly, and I don't know how I got the swatch to work for this, but I did meet Gage for Petite Knit with this. I think it's because I only knit a half swatch and I stretched it so, so much during blocking that I convinced myself it was a good idea. The garment, once it was done, did not stretch nearly as much as the swatch, and as a result, the fit is just not good. I think I did a good job on the actual vest though, like look at that, look at that ribbing on the v-neck. Anyways, I also found that once I knit up this entire sweater, while I do love the tweed bits, I think they are a bit busy slash can't really be appropriately matched by a pattern where it's plain stock and net. I do like the look of it, but I think it would look better with a bit of texture. When I re-knit this vest, the elements I want to keep about it are, I want a v-neck slipover, but I want it to be really oversized, and I think I want to introduce some texture. So the options I was thinking of for this are either re-knitting the Stockholm slipover v-neck, but adding cables, just maybe a very basic cable pattern, or if I check out like a cable book from the library, maybe I can design something that's a little more complex, that has a center panel with a more complex cable, 
or knitting the Friday slipover v-neck which is knit in broken ribs so that could introduce a bit of texture and I think one of the projects on Ravelry actually has that exact yarn combination. Another pattern I really like is the sand grain slipover by Aftonstrick but the one that meets gauge for me would be the round neck version so I'd have to modify it to a v-neck and even then I might not have enough yarn for that. I have three skeins total. I only used two in this size but I have three skeins that I could potentially use. That is an option as well. I'm not quite sure which path I'll take yet but it will be a slip over with some texture. The next piece I have is comically small. This is the Game Set Match Top by Kara's Knitting. I knit the drop it like it's hot cardigan as a test knit for Kara and I had a little under one ball of Malabrigo chunky in the shade pearl left over so I made this so I could have a little matching set and I did wear it for my finished object photos but have not worn it since because it is so so small it's small width wise it's small length wise I get a ton of under boob when I'm wearing it and therefore it's just not practical for me at all I honestly don't really know what I'm going to be doing with this small of an amount of yarn left over. Either they're going to become another pair of very short fingerless mitts or I'm just going to add them to the lint dryer balls that I'm making with my bulky weight yarn. The last project that I'm fully frogging is this. This is the Benny sweater also by Kara's Knitting and it's knit in two strands of a mystery wool that I found in the back of my closet. I think I had it from when I was younger and I was knitting scarves. It is not a lot of yardage at all and in addition to that the fiber is extremely extremely itchy i don't think i'm going to be able to knit another garment with it and i don't even have sensitive skin i can wear platulopi or unspun yarn close to skin i can wear mohair with no problems but this one is unbearably itchy it also comes right below my bra band so even i like a cute crop top but it's way too much even for me so this needs to be unwound and I think the best course of action for a yarn like this that I don't want as a garment is to make maybe an accessory, not even a wearable accessory, but I'm thinking like Honey Wash Bag or Honey Clutch by Petite Knit, something that is a pouch or something that I don't have to put next to my skin. I think that is the plan for this garment. I was also thinking of maybe making a slip over because that doesn't necessarily need to touch your skin, but I also don't think the color is one that's super on brand for my palette, which is what I was talking about earlier as well. Therefore, this one gets to be a cute pouch or a bag or accessory. Lastly, I wanna talk about three pieces where I actually do really like my finished object. I just think it could be improved by frogging a portion of the project and re-knitting it. I think they could get more wear in my wardrobe, although I already do really like the finished objects. The first one is this. This is my vest number one or vest number two by My Favorite Things Knitwear. It's the first big girl piece that I really knit in that it was on smaller needles, it had a smaller gauge, and it wasn't an extra bulky yarn, although this is still knit in Knitting for All of Heavy Merino plus mohair, so that's like what, a worsted gauge, a worsted weight yarn. The only thing that I really wanna fix about this is the armhole and bottom ribbing. I was playing yarn chicken with this one, and it turns out I still have some of the yarn left, so what I think I wanna redo is, first of all, redo the pickup under the arm. I think it could be a little cleaner, although I am really proud of myself for the pickup I did where the line is straight that was very good for a beginner but I want to redo the pickup and also make the ribbing longer since I cut the ribbing short because I was running out of yarn the bottom ribbing is also a little short for my taste so I think I'll rip back and make the ribbing portion longer even if that means that knitting the additional length on the ribbing will mean that the slipover is a little shorter I think I like the overall look of it better so that's definitely something that would be an easy fix and that I plan on doing relatively soon because I already get a lot of wear out of that piece. The next one is this. This is my Montpellier top by November Knits and it's knit in Sanescarn Tick Line in the shade Hortensia. This one is like an easy breezy summer tank. It's got that muscle tank silhouette. The one gripe I have with this is that the armholes are quite deep and I get a lot of side boobs so I kind of need to wear something under this if I'm going to wear it. My solution to this is that I will rip back until a higher point in my underarm and then knit in the round down the side and finish it off like normal in the pattern. That way I can just wear it on its own as a tank and be more comfortable wearing that. I've also worn this as a summer slipover because it is a, I think, cotton linen yarn 
and it's a lot cooler than wool for the summer so I've worn it over a t-shirt and that also works but I would really like to wear it as a tank which is its original purpose so knitting the armhole depth to be shorter will help with that I did think about possibly just sewing it up but I don't think it would match the ribbing pattern that goes down the side since there are an additional one or two stitches that are cast on the last piece that I want to frog and re-knit a portion of is my sporty knit skirt by Handmade by Florence I really like this piece I was really proud when I finished it because of the sheer amount of knitting that there was but I think that it being a test knit, I didn't quite nail the fit of the shorts portion because this is a skort. I think the shorts are just a little too big and you can see them when I'm wearing the skort. You can see them bagging up a little bit, especially in the crotch area. So I think I'm going to rip back the shorts and knit them one size smaller and see if that mitigates the issue because I do want to wear this and I do already wear this even with the shorts bunching issue, but I think it could look even more clean. That's a wrap on this video. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed talking through these projects where I plan on reclaiming the yarn and frogging them. I think I learned a lot my first year of knitting and hopefully going forward I make more intentional choices with my fibers. I've been gauge swatching a ton. I'm really excited to show you my spring and summer knitting plans and I already have swatches for a bunch of those projects. I think swatching in general is something that would help with a lot of these fibers, just recognizing what does and doesn't work for a garment or how a fiber will grow or not grow when it's finished. I hope that 2023 is a year with a lot more intentional knitting and that I don't have to frog as many garments next year, but I'm going to be pretty easy on myself because it was my first year of knitting and I learned a ton even though some of these would be considered failures. Thanks for hanging out and I'll see you in the podcast at the end of the month. Bye!